but uh, predictably they passed up on the opportunity to expose this fraud because they are cowards they are natural born cowards they cannot stand up in defense of the truth what matters to them is the money they steal the money they loot and the money they have stashed away illegally and illicitly they will never stand up for the truth especially Yoruba media they are the worst thing to ever happen to Nigeria and that is why there will never ever ever be a revolution to overthrow this very corrupt order that you have running the damnable zoological republic they are afraid of the truth and are capable, incapable, I must say, of rising up against fraud and evil. I want Yoruba journalists, those defending Jubril, politicians, commentators, and writers to please go back to all the facts that I issued, especially the six scientific facts that I issued about two weeks ago look at it and look at the impostor that presented the budget on Wednesday and tell me if that man standing on the floor of the Senate is the General Muhammad Buhari that you all knew at one point the most painful part of this disgraceful saga in the history of Nigeria is that the facts that I have presented doesn't require any proper functioning brain to undertake this very simplest of tasks of comparing the old Buhari, the dead one, with this younger, vibrant Jubril. All that is required is a pair of eyes and a half-empty brain. You don't even need a full brain that is working properly. Just a half-empty brain will do. As long as you can add one plus one to give you two, you should be able to understand that Jubril is not Buhari. Going by the evidence I shall present this evening. In other words, even a five-year-old can conduct this very simple comparison between the Sudanese impostor that presented the budget and the dead Buhari. Very, very simple. There is one thing they have done very cleverly. Anytime we present their own pictures, they will get a Yoruba journalist because they flew them to Abuja about two weeks ago after my broadcast. They thought we wouldn't hear about it and bribed them very well gave them money all the former editors of the yoruba newspapers were in abuja at the invitation of femi addition or they were given large sums of money to go back to their various stables to condemn what i am doing through very lengthy features and articles ostensibly trying to ridicule the fact that Jubril is running Nigeria and not Buhari. But I must add that they have failed woefully as they will continue to fail because you don't and can never argue with the truth. I want everybody to have a look, a proper look at Jubril on the floor of the House of the Senate. And as I asked you before to do, so shall we do again tonight. Those of you with the video clips showing the left ear of Jubril must see very clearly tonight that his ear, his full ear is still intact. Unlike the dead Buhari. Go and look at the video. That was why Bukola Saraki was intensely looking at his left ear. Go and look at it. You will see. Because he knows 
that Jibril is in power in the zoo. But all of you are frightened because you are all, of course, disturbed by the murderous tendencies of the Fulani Kabbalah. And some have pointed out to me that look at what happened to Alex Bade. He was trying to be brave by confronting the cabal and telling them what he knows about Jibril. That if they don't excuse him from the trial that he's facing, he will expose them. He was promptly killed. And I will prove it tonight. That Aisha Buhari knew about the slaughter and the death of Alex Bade. So also is the ever-present Abakiyari. That I shall also prove tonight. For the world to understand the nonsense happening in Nigeria. Their cowardice and their stupidity. We have all been bludgeoned into stupor. A mental state of cowardice. That men can no longer rise up to speak the truth. For fear of what will happen to them. And I'm sure that some of those supporters of iniquity, they are now rejoicing. Because Alex Bade is dead. And nobody will investigate. No journalist will write about it because they have all collected money. I say it with every ounce of conviction within me. That the media in Nigeria is working against the people. In any other country of the world, the senseless assassination of Alex Bade will make headline news for about two weeks. But because Yorubas are in charge of the media, they have no soul. They have nothing within them. No dignity, no honor. That is why the death of Alex Bade is not being investigated. Why did Alex Bade die? Because he threatened Aisha Buhari and Abakiyari with what he knew about Jubril Aminu al Sudani. Look at the picture of Jubril presenting the budget on Wednesday, December the 19th, and you will see what I'm telling you. Unu the left ear, they brought out a Yoruba girl. I don't know what her name is. She used to work for Sahara Reporters. She was claiming that all the pictures that I used, they were reversed. And I said to her, have you looked at Buhari's face? Look at the cancerous tumor on his chin. It's on the left-hand side. No amount of picture editing can change that. Buhari's degrowth on the left path of his chin the growth the counselor's growth is on the left it can never change no matter how you photoshop a picture it remains on the left hand side it can never ever change therefore the pictures we are presenting were the same pictures issued by a sorok but this Shoroba girl had the temerity to stand up to the world to lie about it because of money Because of money. It is Dr. Buhari non cancerous growth. On the left hand side, there is nothing you can do to remove it. Never, ever, ever. Do you know that somebody came, went live on TV to try to disparage my assertion? I was sent by Elohim. Only those who are discerning enough can understand this very message. Yoruba media is responsible for putting Nigeria in the state that it is today. Because of their selfish and parochial interest. It must be confronted. A spade must be called a spade. When Igbo politicians misbehave, I castigate them. When Biafran politicians misbehave, I castigate them. If the problem is coming from Yoruba dominated media, we must speak the truth. You will see from the picture of Jubril on Wednesday that the ear, the left ear is intact. And how do you know the left part of Buhari's face? Anywhere you find the spot, the cancerous growth on his lower chin. That's the left part of his face. Don't check it anywhere. It doesn't change. It never ever changes. It is there constant. 
I have a mark on my face on the left hand side. If you take my picture, the picture of my face, you will see it there. Even if you reverse it, you will still know it is the left hand side because that is where I have the mark. Very simple thing. All of you are there claiming you went to school and your bad journalists are twisting your brain upside down, writing rubbish. None of you is questioning it. None of you that you claim you went to school. Your left hand is your left hand. The left part of your face is the left part of you. can, no matter what to reverse, it stays there. We must proceed. All of you saw Jibril's birthday pictures. That was on the 16th. Go back and look at the pictures. I said every picture issued by Femi Adesino and that's a rock regarding the dead Buhari's birthday which was being celebrated by Jubril. Did you see that Jubril was cutting the cake with his left hand? Did you notice it? Yoruba media said Buhari is right handed and they agree with them. Yes, Buhari, the dead one is right handed. How can you be cutting a cake with your left hand if you are right handed? Is that possible? Is that done anywhere? It's a simple human reflex. I don't know how they're going to explain this one. I don't know how this uh, uh, Yoruba girl is going to spin this one. Uh, but let me tell her something. If you reverse the picture, no matter how you do it, 76 will read 67. If you reverse this picture, 76 will read 67. This picture is not reversed. And here is Jubril with his left hand cutting the cake. Left cake, the cake. And you know what that means. Now let me give you my first assignment this evening. This is for Bukola Saraki and all the members of the Senate and legislature who are interested in uncovering the truth. Because Jubril is naturally left-handed and they are forcing him to sign some of the agreements and bills with his right hand, he cannot correctly mimic the signature of the dead Buhari. That is one thing. This is my submission this evening. Go and check every document signed by whoever it is that is occupying Asorok from July of 2017 to date. You will see that that signature, the specimen of the signature is not the same as the dead Buhari's own. A very simple assignment that I expect Yoruba journalists to go and try and uncover, but they won't. Instead, they will collect money and be writing rubbish. Left-handed Jubril cutting his birthday cake. The inability of the masses to rise up to this imposter is what this useless generation the useless, not to be Afrans, of course Nigerians, a very useless generation. That is what will be defined by forever and ever. There was a brilliant article written by one of us, one of our writers, Nicholas Onhaji, I'll go through it later on. It started confronting a useless generation. I love it so much that I'll do the honor of going through it this evening for people to understand the mess that they are in. Go and look at the picture of Buhari. It is everywhere. I'm sure people can see this. Look at this. The left part of Jubril, you can see that the ear is intact. Look at the mole on his lower chin, the cancerous growth. The ear is intact. And this is the man presenting budget to all of you. But he, he, everybody in the legislature both House of Reps and Senate, they know that the person that the Northerners voted for is a man that had damaged left ear. This same Jubril came to the house with full, with ear intact. Nobody raised any question. That is why tonight I shall focus on that very ear to let you understand that there are some things they cannot doctor. I went through some pictures online and I saw them that they used Photoshop to try to touch on the ear. The funniest thing is that they gave me the date and the time of the Photoshop. When we shall do our live TV presentation, I'll point all out to the whole world so they can see it. The fraud going on in Asarok. 
Therefore, we shall continue to unmask Jubril. If you want to know the reason why Africa is still, to date, not capable of human development or sustaining any meaningful level of human adv advancement, as say, for instance, in South Africa, where white Europeans created a modern society, you should look no further than the brain of, a we, of we black people. The way, we the, the way we receive, process, and analyze information is the problem with our brain. Some of you will recall very vividly that the same crop of leaders you claim you have today attended the university with the likes of, say, Trump or Cameron or Theresa May or Merkel. Ask yourself, why is it that these leaders can move their respective countries forward, but none in Africa can. But they all went to Cambridge and Oxford. Some went to Harvard, some went to Yale, some went to Princeton. The Ivy League schools. They write very wonderful and brilliant grammar. But when it comes to implementation, they are lacking because their brain doesn't know how to process information utilize that very information to advance the cause of the people. That is where you have engineers that cannot build roads and bridges. Why do we need Julius Berger to build Second Niger Bridge? But we have professors of engineering. Don't. Now, any day you discover for yourself the reason why a professor of civil engineering cannot build a common bridge, you will begin to understand the reason why we black people are backwards. We don't know how to process and utilize information. That is why Jubilee is still there. But tonight, I have made it possible for even a five-year-old to understand that Jubril is different from Buhari. I want Amaka Yoko to begin to publish. First of all, first to release the diagram of the ear. I did it before. Have you all seen this? First of all, release the diagram of the ear. The structure of the ear is called. First of all, put it out there that people may begin to appreciate that Jubil and Buhari are not the same people. Put it out this evening. I want Yoruba, as you're publishing it, I want people to distribute it everywhere. Put it on Radio Biafra London. Put it on every social media platform we control. And I want to invite every Yoruba journalist. Pay attention this evening. I want to prove to you that you're working for the devil. I want to prove to Yoruba newspapers, publishers, and journalists that they are working for the devil. I want to disgrace them tonight before the whole world. Because humanity is listening to me. Radio Biafra is all over the world. And the truth must be preached from here. You will see the structure of the ear. It differs from person to person. And I will ask you again to go and do a comparison. Check your outer ear. Check that of your parents, your children, your uncles, your sisters. Now is the festive season. A lot of you are together. You will see that no two persons share the same ear structure. I've preached this before, but I know I'm preaching it again tonight. Because I have gone one more level to prove to all of you that Buhari is dead and that Jubril is an impostor. Listen very, very carefully, please. The second picture being released was taken officially in London when the dead Buhari attended anti-corruption summit. It was taken very clearly, you will see there. The second picture. That picture is the left ear of the dead Buhari showing. You will notice the mole on the left part of his chin, his lower, his chin. You will see it there. That goes to show that we are focusing on the left part of his face, which means his left ear. You will notice very clearly that it is damaged. Are you looking at it at all? Have you seen it? 
I wanted this every admin we have must distribute this pictures. Don't distribute it randomly, it must come in sequence. The diagram of the outer ear must come first, and you must post all of them together. The outer ear first. The second picture is that of Buhari, the dead Buhari in London in 2016. I want you to take note of the different parts of the ear. This Yoruba journalist that used to, I've forgotten what her name is, you know, the short black Yoruba girl that used to do something for Sahar reporters before. Having worked for Sahar reporters, that's all you need to know because they are liars and cheats. They do anything for money to keep Nigeria united, not because they love you, but because they need access to oil and gas. And they know that any day that Biafra leaves, Fulani will come to Yoruba, march into Yoruba land and decimate them overnight. So we are more or less, they are buffer. We are an insurance against wholesale Fulani invasion of Yoruba land. Look at the left ear of Buhari in 2016. Now, I don't want to go into too much debate with Yoruba journalists. So I have selected the picture of who they said was Buhari visiting Trump in America. Do you all have the pictures of Trump? Of the picture of Jubril when he went to see Trump? So what I'm giving you are official pictures. Official pictures circulated all over the world. Not anything taken by IPOB intelligence. And now, I want, now if you have the three pictures, I want you to begin the analysis yourself. Very, very simple and straightforward. After tonight, if anybody believes that Jubril is Buhari, then I will know that even a filthy pig is better than us, black Africans. I'm telling you the truth. Because we have taken the pain of replicating and pointing out different parts of the outer ear. Both in Buhari's picture and that of Jubril. So the comparison can be made very, very easy. Because the names are sometimes very complex for you to grasp. Focus on the anti-helix or any part of the ear structure that you like. You will notice that the lobule is missing in the real Buhari. In Jubril, it is not missing. And before the Yoruba girl comes to tell me, oh, that the picture was reversed. It's Buhari's right ear. I want you to look at the mole and the lower path of Buhari's mouth. The cancerous growth. It is on the left part of his face. I want Yoruba journalists that has brought shame to journalism to focus on Jubril. Look at his left ear. This is the Jubril that went to see Trump. That trouble is coming later. Because I am telling Trump that they sent a fake man to America. And they know who Trump is. I am taking this line by line, sequence by sequence, so it will sink in properly. So that the explosion will be uncontainable. I am placing the American diplomatic mission in Nigeria on notice that they too are complicit in sending a fake imposter to Trump. And I am proving tonight with the official pictures issued by reputable world media, by White House. This, is, this picture was issued by a White House. That the Buhari they sent them is fake. So every agreement entered into by Jubril with Trump is null and void. I'm, now, I'm sure now you're following me. Do you see what Yoruba journalists are protecting? Do you see how evil they are? I have clearly demonstrated. Have you seen all the various parts? I think Amaka is publishing them on Mazen Namdekan, my Facebook page. If Facebook won't pull it down tonight. Because Yoruba is working for Facebook in Lagos are part of the conspiracy to hide the truth from the people. Go and you will see it. All the various parts of the ear well listed out. Even if you're blind, you can see it. I have no confidence. Have you seen it at all? Have you seen it? 
have you seen this structure as pointed out in Buhari and in Jubril? Now, if you all have it, I want you to do a very simple one plus one comparison. Apart from the lobo that is missing on Jubril, I want you to look at the anti helix. You know the, the big line that runs in your ear, your inner ear. Have you seen it? You know, have you seen the anti helix? Compare and tell me if the anti helix on the real dead Buhari is the same as the one on Jibril. Is it the same? It can never be. It can never ever be. I also want you to have a look at the helix itself. You will see that they two are not the same. I want you to look at the fossa F-O-S-S-A of the helix. These are parts of your outer ear. The one on the dead Buhari is not the same as the one on Jubril. The funniest thing is that this part of the body, there is nothing a surgeon's knife can do. You can only attempt to use plastic surgery and, the, uh, sorry, attempt to use makeup and even if you do, it will show. I am going by the pictures officially published by the British government and by the government of Donald Trump in America, administration of Donald Trump in America, to see the fraud going on in the zoo called Nigeria. All the parts are there, very clear, very, very clear. And I'm asking anybody to go to Google and type in Buhari's visit to White House. You will see these same pictures there. Only if they will bribe them to take it down. But we have them. So it's perhaps a bit um, too late for them. Because I told them that we are not going to stop. And we can never stop until the zoo collapses. That is what Yoruba journalists are fighting very hard. To conceal and to hide from you people. When we say that Buhari is dead, we know what we're talking about. Had Buhari been alive, they will not dare insult America by sending a Sudanese imposter to the U.S. to go and see Trump in the name of one Nigeria. Impossible. Have you seen all the diagrams? I want it distributed everywhere. Three pictures with all the marks of the outer ear clearly identified. For Buhari and for Jubril. After this, if you tell me that the man in Asorok is Buhari, then may the good Lord have mercy upon your dark black soul because you're headed straight to go and meet Lucifer in hell, I assure you. This reminds me of something that distresses me all the time. And I've been preaching on this very matter for almost nine years consistently people get upset when i say it but i must keep saying it because you don't reason if you don't reason like a human being i cannot address you like a human being you have brain so you can reason so you can think we must remember that black africans during and after the colonial era attended most of the higher institutions in Europe and in America, even some in Russia, that produced the great thinkers of the mid to late 20th century. These universities churned out industrialists, writers, philosophers, scientists, etc. Now the question that I'm asking the 68 million dollar question I'm asking is this why is it that other races can convert their knowledge that is what they have read and acquired at these universities or elsewhere into tangible discernible achievement whereas in Africa we are still battling with the rarest basics of life we remain backwards in our thinking and application of solutions to our problems. Why are we backwards? If you are doubting me before, look at the reaction of black people, especially Nigerians, towards the issue of an imposter from Sudan ruling over them. 
there are some things in life you cannot change. You cannot change your fingerprint. You can't change your palm print unless you cut off your, your, your hand anyway. You cannot change the structure of your ear. It's there for life. Why is it that the police all over the world can rely on fingerprint to identify a criminal? The Babylonians used it hundreds upon hundreds, thousands of years ago. Why can't people in Africa in the 21st century be able to utilize the same technology? Why is it so difficult? Only then will you know how stupid black people are. The same thing that the Babylonians used. Every ancient civilization used it up until this very day. Even when you go to vote, you use it. When you tell Nigerians that, can't you simply look at the fingerprint of Jubrid? Look at that of Buhari, they're not the same. They still don't get it. They still don't understand it. That is why I have taken the pains of pointing out this evening. Because he cannot hide his ear. He is no longer waving at us. As I told you, he will not. Jubrid no has he waved in the past two weeks? He's now doing chop knuckle. Is that what they call it? Now you understand, don't you? But they tell you on radio, Biafra, that Buhari will no longer wave in public. This Jubilee will no longer wave in public. I told you that. And that is happening. People still fail to reason. That is what is astonishing. Astonishing. I told you he cannot wave. Any day he waves, we have our telescopic lenses tuned so we can capture it live and show the whole world. Because, you know, we blacks, we are too daft to reason properly. We are continuing. I hope we are going out. People listening to us, are we live and clear to the whole of humanity? Every part of the world is advancing because when they go to school, you tell them if you mix hydrogen and oxygen, it forms water. They come back home and they do it. Israel grows plantain in a desert. Is that true or false? Because Israeli scientists, they apply what they have studied in university. They make it practicable. Live, you see it. I remember in 1985, during the live band-aid in Ethiopia, I had this debate with my father. I asked my father, why are white musicians playing in London and all over the world to feed we blacks in Africa? As young as I was then, I had left secondary school a couple of years before that. My father said it's because there is drought. There is no water in Ethiopia. That is why they are starving. And I said to my father, but you can't create water, can't you, artificially? He said, how is that possible? Why do I say that? I said, because water is H2O. It is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. If you mix it together, it becomes water. So why can't we do it in Africa since we have scientists all over the place? He couldn't answer me because perhaps he didn't want me to feel let down or disappointed with the inadequacies of we blacks. And that has been exercising my mind. In fact, I started to feel that perhaps technology can be built only in the Western world, not anywhere near black people. Then I went through history and read what our scientists did during the war. The great inventions by Biafran scientists. Then I realized that it is possible. It is only Nigeria and this global conspiracy that is stopping us from emerging as a viable independent nation. It then occurred to me that most of the people who I say it without any qualification, nobody can do what we Biafrans can do in Africa. It's as simple as that. I'm not boasting. That is a fact of life. Therefore, we must continue to expose the fraud that is the damnable zoological republic. We remain backwards in our thinking because we don't know how to utilize information. Is anybody still in doubt about the ear of Jibril and Buhari? Are you still in doubt? Is anybody still in doubt? 
I want the ones that I have marked to be circulated. Circulated, invite Yoruba journalists. Everywhere they are, invite them. They defend the indefensible. And here we tear them to shreds. The answer to my question can be found in how we deal with information at our disposal. The analysis of such information and how we choose to act on it. For instance, in any other civilized part of the world except Africa, the least the citizens would have demanded is an investigation into the issue of Jubril, a panel of inquiry. But in Nigeria, as well as in other parts of Africa, the population have been so intimidated by a combination of local forces and imperialist tendencies to the point where we have become stupid beyond redemption. We have become timid. Do you know that in Africa, when you are fighting for the people to liberate them, some of the people will be praying for you to be killed. Do you know why they do that? Because the soul of a black man is black and evil. You can't help it. You know that some of them we are crying that I survived an assault on my house to kill me. Some of them we are jubilating. They thought I had died. Some of them are evil. Some are Asian. Some of them are Yoruba, Kanuri, everywhere. These are black people, black and Nisioji. They love evil so much. That is why Alex Bade is now dead. Nobody's asking questions because you are evil. Nisioji, you people are bad by your very nature. That was why Elohim took away all his glory from Africa and subjugated black people to eternal slavery. Do you know why? No matter how bad white people are, there is a particular level they cannot sink to. At least in this modern day and age. Did you see what was happening in the Republic of Congo? Shooting people? Army! In the Catholic Church. We came out to pray in Abaokezi, Bazo, Actis, our uh, friends to kill us. And people in Abia State are still talking about voting for Gizhi Bazo. Can, can you believe such nonsense? After Operation Pattern Dance, number one, number two, number three, some people in Imo State are considering voting for APC. What type of human beings are you? You don't have any conscience. No conscience whatsoever. You are full of evil. But we know that OKZ Bazo cannot go back, no matter their rigging techniques. And we shall stop him. If OKZ Bazo goes back into Abia State Government House, Abia State will burn. I write it down somewhere and say that I told you. Because he is an agent of the North. And they are doing everything they can to rig that walrus into power. That evil man. We will teach OKZ Bazu a lesson that Abia State belongs to IPOB and to the people. You must understand that. People talk about bribery and corruption as if it is something that inhabits the realm of public office administration alone. The truth is that the worst forms of corruption and cowardice exist within the Yoruba managed media in Nigeria. Yoruba media brought cowardice into journalism. A newspaper editor told one of my assistants that publishing the expose on Jubril will lead to their closure, will lead to the closure of their newspaper. <laughs> and possible imprisonment. And I sent my assistant a message to forward to this journalist. I asked him, then why are you a journalist? You should have tried something else. You should have joined the police force. You, know, you should be standing at a checkpoint collecting money from people. But he's a journalist. Tomorrow they'll give him an award as the journalist of the year. In other words, 
Yoruba journalists have become slaves to the system they vowed to hold in check. Some of you are wondering why am I forgetting? Because they are the problem. The quality of information the public receives is what they are going to act upon. Over the years, they used their media preponderance to hold all of you in chain, in bondage, that today you cannot even speak your mind freely without thinking, oh, who knows what uh, Yoruba journalists will think of me. They make and they break you. The only person they couldn't break is me because I know they are nothing. They are beneath us today, tomorrow, and forever and ever. Yoruba journalists. There are good, brave men in Yoruba land. Very brave men. Those men we shall continue to honor. Always. But the cowards amongst them, we shall continue to expose them. Let us take for an example. Or should I say as an example? Because I have to be grammatically correct on Radio Biafra. Makandiota. You know them. Nigerians aided by their docile and corrupt media have become natural cowards like the owners of the newspapers themselves. Even television is worse. Why do you think the majority of Nigerians are useless? When you listen to channels TV, what makes you think you'll be normal again? Let us look at some cases in point. General Sanya Bacha, a, a half-educated ordinary soldier, looted billions of Naira and studied away in foreign land for his family. Uh, Nigerians, uh, when he died, Nigerians were jumping up and down that uh, the Lord has done it for us, that Kama had, you know, done its job. When Abacha took Abiola and locked him away, people did not revolt. People did not rise up in anger because there is nothing called one Nigeria. Whatever the case may be today, Abasa's children and his wives are having fun living large whilst most of you are in penury running about looking for your PVCs to vote another set of criminals into power do you see how foolish you all are do you see how perverted your thinking is they are busy chasing Desi and Madwege, but they don't want to chase their bachelor family they don't want to chase the family of Baba Shailawa. they don't want to chase the family of Ibrahim Lamode of EFCC they don't want to chase the family of Maino. They don't want to chase the family of Ganduje. I don't know if you're following my drift. Because you are all slaves before them. I came across a reasonable piece of comment that was written by somebody during the week. How instead of us to rise up and take our destiny in our own hands, we are waiting for God to do everything for us. That is the damage that the proliferation of churches have done to your thinking. You no longer reason properly. You no longer reason properly. Very sad indeed. Have you ever seen any European or American white person, Arab, Asian or Latino, waiting for karma to deal with his enemies or to deal with a bad system? People rise up in rebellion. I have explained to you, you know within your hearts of hearts that Jubril is not Buhari. But you don't want to rise up. You're waiting for God to do it for you. The same God that uh, Israel is worshipping. That blessed Israel. And by proxy blessed Biafra. That the deputy mayor of Jerusalem said, it is your responsibility, not God. It is you or your responsibility to remove this imposter. Instead, you're listening to Yoruba media. White people made us what we are today, so we might as well learn from them. If there's one thing I learned from white people, studying in England, is this. It is left for the people to change a corrupt system. Don't leave it to God. Oliver Cromwell sacked King Charles I and cut off his head. You see English people, you see the British, 
Some of you don't know that they rebelled against their own government too. That is why today they advanced and developed. That's why today the House of Commons is sovereign, more or less, in terms of political power. The French people revolted. Americans revolted. Russians revolted. Everywhere, even the Arab Spring, the only place without any uprising is in black Africa. And that is why you are poor. Very, very poor. Do you know why God will not do it for you? Remove Jubril for you. Only if you do it yourself. Because I'm in Israel. I'm preaching from Israel. Before the Israelites came into this very land, in times gone by, God said to them, I have given it to you. Yes. But you must also fight your way in. So you value it. You remember the story of the wall of Jericho? They marched around the wall of Jericho seven times. Why didn't God just open Jericho and say, oh, go in and take it? You still have to fight your way in. So you value it. You want a white man to remove Jubril for you. Then tomorrow you say, oh, I'm black, I'm proud. We are the same. You cannot be the same. The whites are superior to you. Until you do what they have done as well. It's not an insult. I'm telling you the truth. What I am telling you is the truth. Alex Bader is dead. As I pointed out earlier. If you look at what transpired, I'm now going back to the issue of Jubril. Sometimes I digress a little bit to try to buttress my point. I want to bring to you an official account of what must have transpired. These days I no longer take my source from anywhere else because the defenders of the zoo are Yoruba media practitioners. So I take what they have written I analyze it and I use it to judge them. You know they own every media now. You don't know that. Channels, television, everything is, is Yoruba. You don't know that before. With the money that Awolowo stole after the war, they cornered every aspect of the economy, including the media. And they have used it very cleverly to subjugate and subdue all of you. And you have become as cowardly as Yoruba journalists. Very sad indeed. This is from Punch newspaper. One of the leading corrupt Yoruba newspapers. And we must read. This is what they wrote. Not me. Please, this is from Punch newspaper, I beg of you. About Alex Bade. And what led to his death. So you can begin to understand that Jubilee is not Buhari. It has been revealed, said the Punch newspaper, that the former chief of defense staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex Bade, met with Aisha, wife of President Muhammad Buhari. Are you listening to me? Alex Bade that was assassinated met with Aisha Buhari. It is not me. Before they say tomorrow, Nam the Kano made up the story. This is from Yoruba newspaper. Yoruba. Alex Bade met with Aisha, the wife of the dead President uh, Muhammad Buhari, and the chief of staff to the president, Abakiyari, over his trial for corruption three weeks before he was shot dead by a known gunman along Abuja, Kefi Road on Tuesday. Do you need a scientist to tell you what may have happened or transpired? Why, after meeting Aisha and Abakiyari, the man that brought in Jubril, now Alex Bade is dead. A close associate of Alex Bade claimed that he confided, Alex Bade confided in him, that Mrs. Buhari told Bade that only Abak Yari could help him. Listen carefully. Only Abak Yari can help you, not even her husband. She never said, oh, don't worry, my husband will help you. She said only Abak Yari will help you, which goes to confirm that Buhari is not alive. And uh, Jubril does what Abak Yari says. And as I told you from day one, the main culprit in all this is Abakiyari and Maman Daura. Are you following? Somebody came to your house and is begging your wife to help him or her out of a particular problem. Instead of you hold the authority and the power, instead of your wife to come to you to ask you, your wife will now refer you to, to the, refer the person to your secretary. And, uh, does it make any sense? Eh? I, I don't know. Does it make any sense? 
why meet the wife in the first place if you're not seeking to get Buhari's intervention? But Aisha Buhari said, Go to the cabal, one of the two, Abakiari. Only him can help you. You know that Bade, I met him in Kuja, as, as a matter of fact. Oh, he met me in Kuja. He came and left. And I had a brief conversation with him about Nigeria. And those who were around knew what I told him. I said that Nigeria will never work. All this you're doing is a waste of time. He said, oh, no, don't worry. Oh, your, your, uh, your senior brother is my friend. Because my senior brother is, um, is an advice marshal. So I said, he's my friend. Oh, don't worry. You know, HF is my friend. And Nigeria will be better one day. I said, Nigeria can never be better. And today, that man is dead. So sad indeed. So sad. He was facing trial of alleged fraud, criminal breach of trust, and money laundering. He met Aisha Buhari to seek intervention in the legal troubles, which was, uh, which were reportedly taking an emotional and financial toll on him. A close associate of the deceased, I'm reading from Yoruba newspaper, please, claimed that he convinced him, Mrs. Buhari told Bade that um, by going to Abakiari, your problems will be solved. Then, listen carefully. Aisha Buhari then took Alex Bade to Abakiari, the same cabal she was complaining about a few weeks ago. You see the inconsistency of black people. There is no honor, there is no dignity. The same Aisha Buhari was crying about Abakiari. Today, Abakiari is the solver, is the shaker and the mover of the administration because only him brought in Jubril. Anything, Aba, did you see Jubril with Abakiari celebrating the 76th birthday? Did you see him? Cutting the cake as if it is his, it's his own. The kingmaker. Bade stated that Aisha Buhari then took him to Kiari, but the CSO was non committal. That's the chief of uh, staff. To, he was not committal. He asked Ab, uh, Alex Bade to call him back. But uh, he, Abba Kiari, of course, was unreachable since that meeting took place about three weeks ago. Is it a surprise why after meeting Aisha Buhari and, um, and Abba Kiari, he's now dead? To the average demented soul and mind of a Nigerian. Because I don't believe that Nigerians are capable of reasoning. That's why I call Nigeria a zoo. And luckily uh, enough, I think um, uh, Charles Oput has uh, sort of confirmed what I've been saying all along, isn't it? Nigeria is wasn't a zoo. Now you see why I call Nigeria a zoo. The damnable zoological republic. Democracy for those that care to know which is what Nigeria is supposedly operating is about checks and balances. That is why Nigeria now has an official elected dictatorship run by Abba Kiari. He brings in whichever actor he likes to play the role of Buhari. And all of you, you just keep quiet. That is the limit of the understanding of democratic dividend. To an average Nigerian, the dividend is just about voting and they pay you your salary. And that's it. They've been going to school. They say they're intellectuals. They, uh, some, uh, uh, he's an elite. Come and meet the elite. You're an elite and somebody from Sudan is ruling you. an elite. Elitism. Look at black monkeys doing elitism. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Totalitarianism within the confines of these paper democracies in Africa, because Africa doesn't have any democracy. With the, I mean black Africa. In fact, all of Africa, with the exception of uh, maybe South Africa somehow, but it's going down the drain as well. Give black people power in South Africa for 20 more years, and you, you won't recognize the place anymore. That's how we are. Very, very destructive, I must say. Totalitarianism within the confines of these paper democracies in Africa as obtains in Nigeria. <laughs> oh dear me. It's one of the prizes you have to pay to remain alive. If you challenge these dictators, you'll be killed, as they killed Alex Bade. And nobody is now calling him a hero. The same people wanted me to stay in my father's house. And the thing is that they always attack unarmed people. Let's think about Nigeria. They always specialize in killing people who are not armed. Once you're armed, they cannot do anything to you. But we'll get there very soon. I assure you. 
it stands to reason that these are the people that go to Niger Republic, they go to Chad, they go to Northern Cameroon to import people to come and attend their rallies, to import people to come and vote for them. Nobody's asking any questions. I next said, people have forgotten. I next said, people in Niger, in Chad, will vote for the presidential election only. People thought it's, uh, it's nothing. It's, you know, it doesn't really matter. So when they announce 10 million votes for Buhari from Niger and from Chad, are you going to contest it? And they said that those that booed Jubril when he presented the budget will be in trouble once Jubril gets, once uh, Mama and Daura and Dabakiyari gets their hands on power once again next year. But that's, that's not going to happen anyway. That will never ever happen. Because we have been told my friend has reliably written that um, Buhari got very upset when he returned to the villa from the National Assembly. They said he sat down in silence for almost an hour, after which he pointed to the sky with his right finger and in deep rage swore that when he comes back in 2019, he will teach the legislators the lesson of their lives and show them who is in charge. That is Zabakiyari speaking. How dare you challenge Jubril? his protégé. Jubril went on to blame Saraki and Dogara for the whole episode. You even have some hours of people writing. Hey, it's a, it's, a, it's a disgrace. You must apologize. You know in the zoo, once you pay somebody two or three thousand dollars, they start writing rubbish. Have you not seen the most powerful man in the world, Donald Trump, heckled? Have you not seen Putin heckled? Have you not seen Prime Minister of Britain heckled? Have you not seen or heard of Angela Merkel being heckled? Have you not seen that Emmanuel Macron is in trouble with his people? Who are you people that the people cannot speak up? Who are you that you cannot be booed? You will not get a Who are you? Do you understand the of democracy? Do you, are you sure you people are developed mentally enough to appreciate what democracy entails? Are you sure you understand the essence of democratic principles and values? No, you don't. That is why you are an animal in a zoo in Nigeria. You know nothing. Your brains are empty. I hope you, the bad journalists, are listening this evening. Unbelievable. The world is laughing at Nigeria because every day this Jubilee saga drags on whatever value any Nigerian may have had before is dissipating very, very fast. Before the whole of the world. Before the whole of the world. And I want to take you through a timeline of what happened and how the Yoruba newspapers reported this very incident and what they are doing to suppress it. That is something that all of us must be aware of this evening. Because they pay the money to write rubbish and this evening I'm going to address all of them. I will address the nonsense they are writing to let the world understand and appreciate the very fact that Nigeria is one almighty zoo and is in great trouble. I told you they had a meeting and they paid the rubber journalists. To write rubbish. But before I get to my response to Yoruba journalists, because I want to set the parameters before I hit them below the belt this evening. Let us look at what the ex British lawmaker Eric Stewart said concerning the issue of Jubril when this very news broke in the beginning because our people don't follow things sequentially. This news broke on the 27th of May of 2017. Please follow the timeline very carefully and how Yoruba media tried their best to discredit this very story. Uh, this is, these are publications by Yoruba newspapers uh, because I use what they write to judge them. A British politician and family tree officer Eric Stewart Joyce 
has condoled with Nigeria over the reported death of their president, Muhammad Buhari. Eric Joyce, who is also a former member of the parliament for Falkirk West and Falkirk, and Falkirk sent the condolence via his Twitter handle, at Eric Joyce. Eric Joyce wrote, a, Brit a former British parliamentarian, very sad to learn here of the death of President Buhari, who I campaigned for, thoughts with his wife at Aisha Buhari and family. He went on, the president is one of the world's the president of one of the world's largest and sensitive countries died today, being Friday, in London. In our main news bulletins, not a word. You know that BBC is working with the zoo. It's British, so they, you know they own the zoo. The zoo is like a small plantation for them. So they said they won't announce it prematurely because Abakiari and Maman Dara has a plan that will ensure British control of Nigeria in perpetuity. So why don't we just get a Sudanese to come in here and, uh, and act as our president? Nobody will be the wiser. After all, once BBC doesn't talk about it, nothing from CNN and all the heavyweight medias around the world, you know, being black people, we are bound to go ahead with it. Because what I'm saying now will never ever resonate with black people because I am black. It's a black person saying it. As I said before, if Jesus were to come as a black man, nobody would follow him. So, until a white man says it, everything we are doing to Max Jubril remains a speculation. And this I know. And when it happens, I will tell you I told you so. He went on to say, I do stuff in Africa, the extractive industries and Scotland, previous, a UK and soldier, some good moments and some not so good. He was writing about his experience in the zoo called Nigeria, and he tweeted extensively about it. Eric Joyce, with 11.5 thousand followers, former parliamentarian. And Nigerians are still claiming that somehow Buhari is still alive. After what Eric Joyce said, let us go to another Nigerian publication of November the 9th, 2017. Follow the timeline carefully, please. November the 9th of 2017, this publication was done by an Awosa person, Abdul Aziz. Abdul Aziz, that's his name. He was writing for the Premium Times. So you will not say that this is a Biafran publication or it was concocted. It was titled, the headline read, Exclusive, 81 Days After Buhari Still Avoiding Asorok Office. Are you following me? I will read what this Awosa publication wrote about Buhari or Jubril avoiding the office of Buhari about 81 days since his return from medical vacation in the UK. 81 days! President Muhammad Buhari is yet to use his office in the Asorog Villa. Listen carefully. He was not able to get into his office because of his fingerprint. They were changing the whole security system. They built it in such a way that no coup could take place. You remember the experience of Babangida and Oka in, in Lagos, in Dodan Barracks. How Gideon Oka came in to try to kill him. One of his bodyguards stood in his place and was shot and Babangida escaped. So they built as a rock in such a way that it's almost impregnable. Even if you do a coup in Nigeria, you cannot access the office of the president. That was why he took the Army Corps of Engineering and scientists from here in Israel, I must say, 81 days to break down the door. 81 days. As you well know in Israel, the doors in Israel have um, what is called a security life span of about say, four or five hours, isn't it? You cannot, where I live in Israel, you cannot break in into the house. There is a room where I live, you cannot break in. No matter who you are, for four hours at least, to allow me the time to call the security of Israel. And within five minutes, they always arrive anyway. Talk less of four hours. Understand it very well. It took them 81 days to dismantle the door. Yet they hadn't finished the work. Listen carefully, please. I am giving you a timeline of Jubril's enthronement as the president of the zoo called Nigeria. Listen carefully. Mr. Buhari, according to Premium Times, an Awosa newspaper, please bear this in mind.
Mr. Buhari left Nigeria for another round of medical care in the United Kingdom on May 7th and returned on August 19th. The president, however, did not resume at his desk on Monday, August 21, as he commenced official assignments from an auxiliary office attached to his residence. His failure to resume at the office generated curiosity among Nigerians, with some expressing the fear that Mr. Buhari had not recuperated enough to resume work. Please follow the excuses they are giving. The president's letter issued a statement explaining that Mr. Buhari was staying away from the office due to ongoing repair works. This is from a Hawaza newspaper. Hawaza Flani paper. Due to works going on in his office, what necessitated this work to be carried out in the first place? Because the fingerprint is no longer working. I said for 81 days, 81 days is nearly three months. Is that not correct? For 81 days, nobody was able. I want Nigerians to reason for the first time in their lives tonight. This broadcast is for the benefit. For 81 days, his office was inaccessible because of repair work. What type of repairs were they carrying out? We must continue. The presidency letter issued a statement explaining that Mr. Buhari was staying away from the office due to ongoing repair works. The regular office needs some renovation because of the 103 days of absence. Have you heard such rubbish before? This is from our WhatsApp paper. They said that the, the fact that Buhari was away from his office for 103 days, that there were some deterioration. Maybe the computer melted. The table he's using, um, what's it called? Weasel entered into it and destroyed it. Because he stayed away for 103 days, his office deteriorated. The curtains fell down. The ceiling collapsed because nobody was there. Have you heard such rubbish before? But you are Nigerians. Your brains were not tuned to receive the truth. That is why when you hear lies, you gobble it up. But I'm here to expose all their lies anyway. For your own benefit, not ours. Because we are IPOB. And uh, we are learned and reasonable already. Listen very carefully. Another of Mr. Buhari's media aide, Garabasha, who later blamed the damages on rodents. They blamed rats. Before they said it was um, some repairs. Now it is now rats that they are blaming some rodents. An excuse Nigerians largely found amusing. Following the three months period of disuse, rodents have caused a lot of damage to the furniture and the air conditioning units. Can you believe such rubbish? And it took them over five months to rectify it. This is what Gareba Shehu said. So the version issued by Femi Adeshino is different from the version issued by Gareba Shehu. And uh, you, know, you know we are blacks. <laughs> we don't listen very well. So nobody can put two and two together to arrive at four. We just took it at face value. Oh, they have said it. And why did they get away with this? Because of Yoruba media. Covering for them all the time. Because of Bola Medi Tinubu. And his, um, and his stable of newspapers and television. It is in the interest of Yoruba media and Yoruba Muslims to defend Buhari to the hills. And they are doing a very marvelous job. I am still reading what Hausa Flani paper wrote. However, 81 days after the president resumed work, Villa staff and visitors to the seat of power say he was still operating from outside of his official office. Can you believe such nonsense? It's just like uh, Trump. Trump traveled, uh, was ill, came back and they said he cannot get into the Oval Office. That um, the whole place deteriorated. And the Americans then asked questions as to why. What type of deteriorated? Now said these rats. How can rats enter inside us rock? So that means Nigeria is so dirty and filthy. That's what it means. But people cannot see it that way. That they looked at you and lied to you. And it doesn't mean anything. Because you are all liars. So lying or accepting lies comes to you naturally. Very sad indeed. I continue to read. This is despite, despite him, that's uh, so-called Buhari, taking full control of the day-to-day -day running of the government, including hosting visitors and holding meetings at the villa. Mr. Buhari, as a rock insider, say, is now using annex offices at other locations within the expansive premises, including one attached to his house. Another office used by the president is one adjoining the banquet hall. So, they were detailed. 
I commend the premium times. They were very detailed. They were telling us exactly where Buhari was obviously walking from, or where Jubril was walking from, as the case may be, because his fingerprint doesn't match that of Buhari. So if they had known, they would have cut off Buhari's finger or cut off his hand, bring it back and place it on the scanner, on the fingerprint scanner to scan and open the office. But I'm not sure Aisha would have agreed to that. So they had to remove everything and start all over again. On October 30, 2017, Jubril received Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, as I told you. You know, they are all in this nonsense together, Yoruba media, at the banquet hall office, not inside his own office. Now, listen to the another reason. They said it is spiritual reasons. Mr. Buhari's absence from his office is said to be connected to his tortuous health challenges. Inside said spiritualist Ndidibia Babalawo, who worked on the president's condition, advised against him using the office before. They said it's deteriorated. Second time it was rodents. The third time it's because of what Babalawo said to Buhari and he's a very faithful Muslim. The trip to London in May was unscheduled and all checks done, including in Germany, revealed nothing. We had to resort to prayers. Somebody said uh, that nothing was wrong with, uh, with the dead Buhari, that uh, they went to Germany and to England, everything was okay. Now, Babalawo said all they need to do is to resort to, to charms and to prayers. And that's what they have been doing. That is why he could not access his office. And some of you bought it hook, like, hook, line, and sinker. Very, very sad indeed, isn't it? You're told lies and then you, you gobble it up. Very, very sad indeed. When contacted, Mr. Garaba Shehu said, the president is at liberty to work from any office or location within the villa. It's not your business. The same thing with work result. It's not your business. You cannot ask. Who are you to ask? And people foolishly and hopelessly kept quiet. And then the journalist asked him, how about the repairs you are carrying out to the president's office as announced by the presidency in August? Mr. Shehu declined further comments. What other proof do you need? What other proof do you need that Buhari is dead? Buhari and Wugo, Buhari is dead and gone. But some of you will not be able to understand it because you are incapable of reasoning. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. I gave you six scientific facts, one of which I have expanded on this very evening to prove to you beyond every conceivable doubt that the plastic surgery they did to Jubilee did not affect his ear. They didn't touch his ear because they make a mess of it. Go and look at the ear of Jubilee. I have marked everything out and see what is happening. Remember that Lai Muhammad responded to my six scientific facts. What did he say about the facts that I released? He said that the reports is false. He blamed the reports as an influence from opposition parties ahead of 2019 general elections. Lai Mohammed stressed that Buhari gained access to his office in Asorok, but after how many months? After how many months? Within a space of five months, a new Asorok could have been built. Why did it take you five months to dismantle the Israeli security installed in Asso Rock to protect Babangida? True or false? That Nigerians cannot reason. They say that what I am propagating is fake news. I said to the Yoruba lady journalist trying to defend Jubril. Why can't Jubril speak full food? Do you know what the Trump said? She said that uh, has anyone heard Buhari before speaking full food? Why must he speak it? This is a journalist. This is a journalist. A Yoruba journalist for that matter. People are asking for evidence and for proof. You are saying why must you ask? Where does his uh, work result? No, you are not supposed to ask. Why should you ask? He's a general in the army. How did he get there with a certificate? But you forget that people go to Toronto University that doesn't exist. They forget. Lai Mohammed said, this is clearly the fake news and handiwork of the opposition in serious distress and confusion. What a bloody pack of lies. 
I detest PDP as much as I detect I detest APC. You are all the same criminals. All of you are the same. You cannot do anything to change the lot of the masses. That is who you are, and you will remain so. Now, let us go to Yoruba papers and what they are saying to counter what I said. And as I told you before, Bolatinubu's papers and TV station, they are at the forefront of it. Yoruba people is the problem or a significant proportion of the demons afflicting your average Nigerian because they lie to you and they deceive you. This is Bola Metinibu's paper, The Nation. When did they publish this? They published this on December the 3rd to try and counter the evidence that I, pre I, I, pre I presented. They said, where is the evidence? And tonight I am telling Bola Metinibu, we have published our evidence. Look at the ear of Jubril. Look at the ear of Buhari. Look at it and you know they're not the same. I'm asking you, has it changed? Is it the same? Is it the same? Two weeks ago, into the presidential election, a non-issue is still an issue. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, responded to talk of a presidential impersonator on November 29th. Mohammed said, it is, a, it is idiotic to say the president is cloned. I never said he was cloned. I said Jubril is a body double. A body double. And I don't want to lose respect for Willis Shoyinka because he should not be propagating this cloned rubbish. I never said Buhari was cloned. I said Buhari is a body double. They brought in an actor, Jubril Aminu Sudani from Sudan, from Khartoum, to come and impersonate Buhari. That's what I said. Not a clone. I must keep stressing this. But the Yoruba media, they will not listen. Tomorrow they will write clone. He was cloned. I never said so. I never ever said that Jubril is a clone of Buhari. No, no, no. I said he's an impersonator. A body double. But you know, Yoruba journalists, they hear the truth, they publish lies. That's how they feed. That is how they keep you locked in into an unworkable one Nigeria. By feeding you lies. By feeding you lies. It is idiotic to say the president is cloned. I don't see any serious government responding to that. Well, they did respond, of course. Why wouldn't they respond? Because Jubril is not Bukhari. They know that very well. Now, they went on to say that, that the video outlining the claim has since been shared more than 5,000 times on Facebook and Twitter. In it, Nam, the candidate of IPOB, tells his followers that Buhari had died. The man you are looking at on television is not Buhari. His name is Jubril. They wrote basically regurgitated what I said. They said, repetition of falsehood doesn't make it true. This is Yoruba at their best. Or should I say at their worst? Yoruba journalists. Not ordinary Yoruba people, no. There are good people amongst Yorubas. As there are evil men amongst uh, uh, evil politicians. And uh, good ones amongst them too. They said, I am repeating falsehood. Because if you castigate me, I will read it out on air. But doesn't Nam De Kanu know this truth? They said, I'm a controversial leader. That I have repeated this absurdity about a week before Muhammad responded. Kanu claimed in the radio broadcast that Buhari was dead and look alike from Sudan. Look alike! Now you're talking. Look alike from Sudan. Jubil Aminu al Sudan was in Asorok, the seat of the federal power. After repeating. What I had said, uh, basically, they went on to say that can deepened the absurdity by claiming that U.S. President Donald Trump never met with the, He never did. That was why I used it tonight for, who is the editor of, of, of Nation newspaper, for goodness sake? I don't know his name. You must find his name. People must tweet those three pictures of the ear, the structure of the ear, the ear of Buhari, and the ear of Jubril. Tweet it to Yoruba newspaper journalists, all of them, please. I beg of you. Because my claim tonight, which, which I shall be making official to the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria tomorrow is this. That you are complicit in the sending of an impostor to President Trump. The man you sent to Trump is Jubril Aminu al-Sudani from Sudan. And not the dead President Mohamed Buhari. Trump will hear about it before this week we're going into runs out. Now they will know how serious we are. 
They say that I argued that Buhari's left side outer ear had a deformed lobo and a straight anti-helix, which I'm talking about, adding that those features could no longer be seen in the president's present photograph. They outlined everything that I had said. Everything I said. You know, instead of them to address it, uh, they said that Kano doesn't have a credible voice. Uh, that um, I'm facing trial for alleged offenses of conspiracy to commit acts of treasonable felony and other related offenses. And these are journalists that went to school. Do you see where I have issues with them? So you're telling me that somebody agitating for a separate homeland is treasonable felony. When there is no crime in Nigeria defined as such. Do you know that Binta and Yako would not hear this case for the simple reason that there is no crime? There is no crime committed at all. That asking for a separate homeland is enshrining the laws and constitution of Nigeria. Are you aware of that? But these are journalists and they went to school. They are elites. They are learned. They, are, they know what they are doing. But if one has it, how wicked they are. How evil your journalists are. Evil men. And we, evil room we are going soon. They try to use the fact that a fabricated charge against me which I comprehensively disgraced Nigeria in their own law court because of they are writing it down to confuse the world to make them think I am some sort of criminal when I told them I was going back to their law court with two million men and they came to kill me because I exposed who Jubril is do you see Yoruba journalists and you want me to be in the same country with these people that cover evil and lie because of money they are getting from Asorok? I cannot be in the same country with them. It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. They now talked about my disappearance and what my lawyers argued with the army in court without addressing the critical Evidence before them, only quanti jubril. Look at his outer ear, look at that of Buhari. Do the comparable analysis and tell me if they're the same person. If the answer is overwhelming, no, jubril is different from Buhari. Look at the ear. Hey, Umuchineke. Jubril will no longer come out again because every lens will now face his ear. Is he going to cover his ear? Can you cover your ear now? I'm giving the whole of the people in the zoo this very simple assignment. Take pictures of his ear. Compare that with that of Buhari. Or officially release pictures of Buhari by the British government. You will see that whoever you have there is fake. He has refused to wave his hands. Let me say he's going to cover his ears. That means that Jubri will no longer campaign. Do you know why they're sending Osibajo everywhere? This is Osibajo who is campaigning. You don't know that? They can't send him. This radio station, ordained by heaven, has made it possible that Jubril can no longer campaign. If he comes out, either he exposes the palm of his hands or his ears will show. And ordinary people will take pictures of his ear. Therefore, Jubril will no longer come out to conduct any rallies for election. That is the end of discussion. It's over for them. And I told them, I will lock them down. I will imprison Jubril inside Asorok. He can never come out again. Ngato Yanga on this noble platform, Radio Biafra. I will imprison him. He can never come out again. He's gone. They came to kill me and they couldn't. And now I am in Israel to do the will of Elohim. Ojezirimozi. Hashem sent me. Chuko Kikabi Amazirimozi. And that's what I'm doing. I must do it. He said, this ridiculous claim about Buhari has been repeated by others, including Reno Mokri. Of course, the, one of the few that actually uh, are brave enough to speak the truth. And my dear friend, Femi Fani Kayode, the man who typifies the truth from that very angle of Yoruba. And that's why I say that he's not Yoruba. He must have Biafran blood in him from somewhere. I'm telling you the truth. He said, but where is the evidence? I have given you the ear. Imagine what I give evidence. Or not. What other thing you want me to do? I'm giving you the evidence. The palm of his hand is not the same. His fingerprint is different from that. And you're asking me for more evidence. What do you want me to do? You 
you want me to go and 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 dig out the bones of the dead rotten Buhari in Saudi Arabia and give to you? Is that what you want? Is that evidence enough for you? You turn around and tell me that the bones are not that of Buhari. They belong to somebody else. You're a bad journalist. You are evil and evil is you. Children of Lucifer. They never addressed any of my points. Tinubu's paper, nation, never addressed any critical evidence I placed before them. Not one. Not one. Where is the evidence? Are you blind? IPOB must send those three pictures this evening or this night or this morning, depending on where you are, to Yoruba journalists. Send it to Yoruba. Only Yoruba journalists, please, I beg of you. The defenders of evil. They said that news agency of Nigeria has investigated the claim and found no evidence to support it. <laughs> Imagine news agency of Nigeria investigating something. It's like putting Dracula in charge of the blood bank. You know Dracula and Amiobara? You put them in charge of where they keep blood. Is that possible? And you ask him, you ask Dracula that blood is missing from this blood bank. Can you please investigate? You're asking Dracula to investigate missing blood. Asking news agency of Nigeria to investigate. New, can't you see the name? News agency of Nigeria to investigate? Investigative journalism? A government agency to investigate? Oh. Zoo is gone. That is from nation. That is the, they have debunked what I said without presenting not one coherent, logical rebuttal. Not one. That's Yoruba for you. Not one. Not one single one. Not one single one. Let us look at what Guardian paper, because I told you, Femi Adesino invited them, gave them money. All of them went back to be writing rubbish in Lagos. Nation, Guardian, all of them. That is why Nigeria can never, ever improve. Never, because they love lies. It was a futures. They said, he's a, he's a, this one is an Igbo man. Chetan Wanze, probably born on the rubbish pile somewhere in Lagos, near... Okokomaiko, somewhere. He goes to the village once every six years. Spends about, you know, from the eve of Christmas to the second of January, he will go back. He speaks Yoruba more than he speaks Igbo. And his friends, unfortunately, none of them can tell him the truth. He came back to write for, he was the one, is the Igbo face. I don't know, that there's one one food I used to write for Sahara. Uh, what's his name? Are you sure he's Igbo at all? I think he also grew up in Lagos. One of those people. I don't know why they've not given him money to write his own piece. I've been waiting for, for his own take on this Jibril saga. Maybe he knows the truth. Or his evil wouldn't even allow him to sing so low as to try to defend what is clearly indefensible. This is from an Igbo man, Chetan Wanze. Another lost soul in Lagos somewhere. My mama said be Igbo. That brigade, you know them. I have vivid me memories of the celebration in Benin City on Okori Hills or Gawa. They never addressed the point direct. At least I give nation credit for going straight to, to address the issue. What he's trying to do is to tell you that there was um, uh, Nigeria lost um, uh, a World Cup match and people were hoping against hope that FIFA would overturn the result. Basically that what I'm saying is wishful thinking that it is a rumor being peddled by me and other people that Jubril is your president. He said that there are three threats to this incident. First, Jubril al Sudani is the creation of a delusional and possibly deranged Namdekan. Said I'm a madman. He said, I talked about it on Radio Biafra last year because you're wrong. You don't get your facts right. I exposed Jubril al Sudan in July of last year in my house, in my father's compound, in a video covered by the Gotha media, Sahara reporters. Gotha, the lowest of the low, is there for the whole world to see. Very clear. 
what I said before any other human being. I said that on July. Was it July? It was July 2017. The children of light came to see me. And I was addressing them, IPOB, in my house. And I remember that that thing they brought back is Jubrila Sudan. I, I knew before they brought him back that they were making plans. Because once we got the intel that they would not allow Osibajo to take over, I knew that they were planning to replace this very person. Are we having difficulties? Are people listening very loud and clear? Absolutely. Absolutely, we must proceed. We must proceed. They said till they don't know what is wrong with their president. This is uh, Cheta Wanze writing for, for Guardian. And the fact that Trump said that Jubril was a lifeless being, he doesn't want to see him again. That perhaps I may have gleaned my facts from there. What he's saying in essence is that nobody should believe me. That is from guardian newspaper you must bear with me this evening i must go through this sequentially to tell you what yoruba media are doing it doesn't matter his name is Igbo. he is yoruba by profession by lying profession he is yoruba they travel to abuja they flew him to abuja to go and collect money now nation came again after the first one they wrote another one on december the 12th they titled it hallucination time hallucinating anybody who knows me knows i don't drink and i don't smoke i don't because i pray a lot i don't drink and i don't smoke they know that very well but they said i was hallucinating under the influence of drugs those who thought the control the control was over the identity of, uh, of their president was over have been prompted to rethink what they think ipob leader nam the kind of maintains that the boss in Asa Rock, this is a federal power, is an impo of course he's an imposter, complete one. But after saying all of this, they said that there were no scientific evidence, despite the facts that I presented. Are you going to change the palm print of Jubril? Can you change it? Can you change his ear? Are you going to force him to speak for food, which he cannot speak? So you think scientific fact is that you need to see me in a white lab coat inside a laboratory with the, with a um, test tube and uh, what's it called? It's not called a beak. You know the white thing and doing titration. Then you believe he's scientific. Do you see how the reason? And these are journalists. It's Benga or Motosho. Send this thing to him. He's the editor of um, Nation Paper. Send it to him, Benga. He thinks that being a scientist is anybody in a, in a white coat in a lab wearing goggles do you see how it is in africa the palm print is an irrefutable scientific evidence so is his ear so is the fact that he cannot speak full food those are irrefutable facts on the table go and investigate it don't tell me that we are switching pictures because buhari's left ear is on the part of his face with the mole growing, with the cancerous growth on his face. It is there. You can't change it. It is a fact you can never change or lie your way out of it. They said I was hallucinating. Another publication by Tinubu's paper. It is in their interest because Tinubu is hoping against hope that Jubilee will hand over to him. How mad he is. Do you see the way they reason? So if we keep it a secret that um, Jubril is from Sudan, after this, Awasa, Fula, Fulani will, not Awasa, Awasa doesn't exist. Fulani will hand over to us, we Yoruba people. Do you see their sense? And after that, they hand over to somebody in the north. They'll be playing ping pong with us. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Everything I outlined, all the scientific evidence at their proposal, they said, Kano's assertions and questions are curious because Buhari has put the issue beyond question. Has he spoken for food? Has he? he? Has he removed his cap? They said I shouldn't ask him to remove his cap. Can you imagine what that? These are journalists. Yoruba defending Jubril. Has he removed his cap? Has he changed his palm print? Has he changed from that of um, Jubril to that of Buhari? The answer is no. Has his ear changed? The answer is no. Jibril's ear is different from that of Buhari. The palm print is different from that of Buhari. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is a big puzzle that Kano still insists that the president is an imposter. Kano is hallucinating. This is that is news. Hallucinating. I uh, get to go make sure that I need confirmation that we have tweeted the three pictures of the year to Mr. Omotosho of Nation Newspaper. To every Yoruba controlled media in the zoo, I want that information. Those pictures tweeted to them now, immediately, not tomorrow. Immediately. Everywhere. I want it everywhere. I'm sure that Amaka Eko must have posted it on, on my page. Mazen Nam Dekanu. Go there, you will see it. Incontrovertible evidence. Incontrovertible evidence. We continue on their lives. The time now is approximately 8 minutes to 9 p.m. here in the Holy Land of Israel. We are to Biyama, determined that I should come to. To continue to preach his very gospel. The gospel of redemption. Not just for Biafra, but the whole of Africa and mankind. Because only Biafra can save black people all over the world. Even those in America. Only Biafra can save you. Only Biafra, nobody else can. Only Biafra. By the will of the Most High. I told them that Buhari referred to somebody as your highness. One of his ministers as your highness. I, I, they said, no, it doesn't mean anything. It's a slip of tongue. That's what they said. A slip of tongue. And this is the reason why I got very, very upset with Wole Shoyinka, who should know better than most what I said. Instead of Wole Shoyinka to come out openly to say that... Uh, Jubril is not to Buhari. Uh, that Jubril is from Sudan, or at least she will be investigated. What he said is that um, is an issue of stolen identity. Now I'm, I'm asking this Nobel laureate, who stole whose identity? It is a stolen is an issue of stolen identity. Are you saying that Jubril stole Buhari's identity, or what? What exactly are you talking about? Why don't you call a spade a spade? It was carried in the newspapers. What Shoyinka said, alleged Jubril is a title. Issue of stolen identity should be taken serious. Issue of stolen... Who stole Buhari's identity? This was also carried. These are those who are trying the best they can to refute my assertion that Jubril is not Buhari. And you can see what a mess they have done of it. There is something that PDP can also do. PDP should please ask their leader in the, in the legislator, who is um, Bukola Saraki, to this night or tomorrow morning, go through the documents in his possession, signed by Buhari, up until December of 2016, and the ones signed by Jubril from July of 2017, and see if the signatures are the same. You can do that one tonight. That is a scientific evidence. Scientific. If Nigerian journalists are looking for evidence, I am giving them a new one tonight. Not just the ear, the palm. Go and check the signatures. They are not the same. Bukola Saraki can do that. I know he'll be afraid. They will kill him. You know, he's from Kwara State. The part conquered by Fulani people. He's a Yoruba man, but he's under conquest forever and ever. Him and his and his children and his children's children will live under Fulani bondage. Answerable to Sokoto Caliphate forever and ever. That piece of Yoruba land is gone. So I will understand if he's too afraid to do it. But he's a very brave man. He's a very brave man. A very, very brave young man, I hasten to add. Because he's nearly my age mate. Bukola Saraki. Better Haneze will say, oh, that small boy. But when they go to Bukola Saraki, they bow down for him. But Bukola Saraki is almost my age mate. He's older than me by about three years. Do you see how things flow in the zoo? <laughs> Which I'll get to Haneze later. Let's continue. My submission tonight is that the signature of the late Buhari is not the same as that of Jubril. 
QED. It is your job. Maybe journalists, they think I'm foolish. When I go and research and bring out all these facts, they take it for granted. I'm giving them an assignment. Yoruba journalists, look at Buhari's signature before 2016. Look at his signature afterwards. You said he's now well, that he doesn't require any more treatment. So there should be no anomalies or irregularities in the two signatures. They want his hand before his treatment, and the ones he's now signing after his treatment. Because, you know, they will provide excuse for him as well. That is their job. Now, with the time now standing at approximately 3 minutes to 9 p.m. this evening, Ikechuku, I want you to please play us the video of what Buba Galadima said about the occupant of Asarok. So you will hear... From a, a house of a man, as well. what he said regarding Jubril the imposter. Please go ahead. The man don't think is the boy me and Yunka used to. Okay, and take it down. If it was breaking a little bit, I want the original clip posted. I think it was posted by a Nigerian eye, is that correct? Originally. I also want it circulated everywhere. Buba Gadema said, him and his government, he never said Buhari. Him, which means Jubril and his government. He stated it clearly. It is not Buhari, they know. It may or may not be Jubril from Sudan. Understand this very well. I wish Yoruba people can take note of that. Because this Buba Gladima was once a chieftain of APC. I know what they will say tomorrow. Uh, he, 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 Buhari refused to bribe him. Because of that, he now spoke against him. He said... I don't think the man in Asorok is Buhari I used to know. He may not be the Jubril of Sudan, but definitely he is not the General Buhari that we used to know. He said Yinka and I. Maybe he was referring to somebody within the audience. Very sad indeed. And I released the six scientific facts that the world may know precisely what to look for in the new improved Jubril Buhari from the old one. I outlined these facts two weeks ago. I did not broadcast last week because I had meetings to attend. And in my broadcast two weeks ago, I made it very, very clear that nobody has been able to refute my claim. Not even the Yoruba girl that they paid to gloss over very serious allegations of high crimes and misdemeanors being perpetrated by occupiers of the highest offices in Nigeria. Instead, these newspaper columnists and commentators, Femi Adeshin and Co., have been flying men and women into Abuja, bribing them to be writing insignificant rubbish against what I am saying. A significant proportion of those you call journalists in Nigeria are part of the problem. They are collaborators with your oppressors. And the sooner you realize this, the better. I told you two weeks ago that Jubril will never again wave at a crowd of people. This is also a scientific evidence. Can anybody show me in the past two weeks where Jubril 
was seen waving publicly to people. Have you seen any? His chop knuckle now, clenched fist. The Yoruba girl said he was doing the same thing in 2015. That if you clench your fist, you also wave at the people. It's election. You must wave. You must greet people now. You must wave at the people. Because you must wave at them. Are you now telling me that waving is no longer part of meeting the people or, or greeting them? Because you're a bad journalist who provide excuse for anything in the world. If they can explain away the goodness of Satan, they will do it. My challenge is very simple. Those of you at National Assembly during the presentation of the 2019 budget by Jubril was his left ear lobo missing or not? A very simple question. I'm not sure they'll be able to answer it either. Go through the signatures of the dead Buhari and tell us if they are the same with the ones being signed now by Jubril. Let me now warn Nigeria and one Nigerianist that every document signed by Jibril IPOB will challenge in international courts. Every document he ever signed. And then you know how serious we are. Every document ever signed since July of 2017 IPOB will challenge its validity. Don't say to go along. Since it has become customary for certain Yoruba journalists to misinterpret their own officially issued photographs of Jubril, I have decided to challenge the few courageous senators left to please, please, please go through Jubril's signature and compare that with the one of Buhari before. Especially documents signed in July of 2017 when he was still learning to master the mannerisms and reflexes of the dead Buhari. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Did anybody observe the 76th birthday of Jibril, of Buhari, so to speak? Did you see any picture of Aisha and the children with uh, this new version of Buhari? Any new picture? You know what they did? Femi Adeshino issued the same photoshopped old picture. And somebody asked him, is it this only reddish ox blood dress that uh, Zara Buhari has? The same old dress. Photoshop. Look at the proper pictures of the 76th birthday of the dead Buhari being celebrated by Jibril. And tell me if Aisha was there and the children. Show us. You see that they are missing. Instead, what they have done is to go and Photoshop old Aisha, Aisha's and photograph into Jibril. To show affection. There was one poorly photoshopped photograph of Aisha's head resting at the back of Jubril. At the back, not on the shoulder. You know, they wanted to place it in such a way that the head would be resting on the shoulder. But it was at the back. You see, they're not very smart after all. Uluole has a long way to go. At least for once. Um, the Yoruba journalists in, in Asa Rock or those in the government house covering Jubril will at least concede to one use of Oluwole that they have in Lagos Island where they forge certificates. Now, this is another one. Sci they said they want to, you know, the thing about it is that they listen to facts, but they choose to ignore it. I am giving you another fact. And this goes to Muslims all around the world. How many times are you allowed to perform Hajj within a year? Does anyone know? I know only once in August, and then you have the 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 what they call the lesser hajj if you want to perform it. But let us look at um, Aisha's travel itinerary. From you know we are researchers in IPOB. Our intelligence is second to none. Let's look at uh, where Aisha has been since December of 2016, when she travelled to Saudi Arabia to begin the arrangements of where to bury Buhari in case he, he, he dies off. Why did Aisha perform more than three trips to Saudi Arabia in 2017 alone? Three trips. 
lesser hajj, uh, big hajj, lesser hajj, one person. So God didn't hear the first prayer. My goodness. Do you know that the time, Elohim is marvelous. Do you know that the time that they said uh, Buhari was in a London hospital, that instead of going to London, that Aisha was actually going to Saudi Arabia? Do you people know that? We have it. It's IPOB, that's how we work. Now let's start. Aisha was frequenting Saudi Arabia, not London. The first one was on the 6th of December. No, that's the last one, 6th of December 2017. Aisha Buhari traveled to Saudi Arabia in February. Is that not correct? They said he came back from Saudi Arabia on the 11th of February or 12th of February. Go and check it. As I'm telling you, you're Googling it. Aisha traveled to Saudi Arabia in February to go and bury the husband. Used the excuse of the bigger Hajj to travel in August to go and pray by his grave. Aisha also traveled on the 6th of December of 2017 again to Saudi Arabia. Each time she travels, they will say she's going on Hajj. And that led me to ask some Islamic scholars, how many times are you allowed to perform this Hajj? They said it's once a year. How come Aisha Buhari is always going to Saudi Arabia on Hajj? Three times in a year. But it's a question for those who can actually reason. It's a question for those who can actually think properly. Aisha Buhari traveled to, came back from Saudi Arabia on February the 11th, came back from Saudi Arabia again on 29th of August or thereabout of 2017, and also came back from Saudi Arabia again on the 6th or thereabout of December 2017. One person. Allah didn't hear the first prayer, didn't hear the second one, she had to go for the third time. Is that how it's done? I have gone through their publications, not my POB, one after the other. These we are covered. Go and put the dates on Google and search for it yourself. 11th and the 12th of February, Aisha back from Lesser Hajj. 27th of August, Aisha back from Big Hajj. 6th of December 2017, Aisha back from Lesser Hajj. One person. These are the ones we know. How many more don't we know? Let me repeat what I have said about the impostor. And that is Jibril. And the fact that he will never again wave his hand in public. This was exactly what I said two weeks ago. Anybody representing Buhari, any day you wave your hand at us, it is bye-bye. Any day again, as I'm talking, telling you tonight, and I refer to Yoruba journalists as well. Every day I keep mentioning them. Every night I come here, I mention them. You have cameras and you have smartphones. We have cameras with telescopic lenses. Any day Jubril comes out to wave his hand, it is bye-bye. He's waving bye-bye to himself and all of the zoo. And since then, he has never waved his hand again in public. Are Nigerians that foolish that they cannot just demand? Just raise, don't do anything for us. Just raise the palm of your hand, that's all. Go Instead, inside the assembly, he used his thumb to cover his, uh, his, um, the, the, his palm. Did you see it? He used the thumb to cover his palm, and I want that picture published of where you because they will say, Oh, did you see him waving his hand? But he used his thumb, the big thumb, to cover. Yes, it is there. I want it published everywhere so that the world will know that Anna Meke Jubril Ab, I'm tying him slowly. I will confine him to Asorok. He will not attend any campaign, I will keep him there. I will be making fun of them. I will use Jubril to show the world how foolish Nigeria is and Nigerians at large. He can no longer wave his hand. Normally, when you're saying four more years, is this not how you do it? This is the way you do it. You keep
keep your palm open. Look at the other ones doing it. He used his thumb to cover the markings on his palm. So that the world will not know. He thinks he is smart. But we are smarter than them. Because we are IPOB. We are putting them to the sword tonight. Complete decimation of their lies and their deceits. Wherever they are now, your journalists are under the bed. They know we are not joking. I know they won't publish if I don't give a damn. If they like, let them publish that. It is not my business. The whole world listens to Radio Biafra. The garbage they circulate is only within the zoo. Humanity knows I'm speaking the truth. And the Elohim will always bear me witness. Always, always. Since it has become customary for certain European journalists to misinterpret their own officially issued photographs, we must continue to use the ones they publish to judge them. Their own they used to publish, we shall use it to judge them. We must continue. This is Radio Biafra. Go through Jubril's public appearances for the past two weeks. You will see that he no longer goes back at the public. That is key. Absolute key to what we are doing. Go back to his ears tonight and you will see that they are not the same people. Not the same at all, at all, at all. This is the conspiracy of silence from those in the Yoruba media and intelligentsia who see the issue of Jubril, the imposter, as something that must not be investigated. Because it will cast them in a very bad light. It will stop the Eurobars from getting the presidency in 2023, which they want very badly. And supporting Jubril, an imposter from Sudan, is their key to doing it. But we are not relenting. We are IPOB. We know unity beggars are aware of what this could do to the cohesion of Nigeria. Hence, they are concerted and desperate effort to suppress the story at all costs. But we know they will never, ever succeed. I have placed incontrovertible proof in the public domain tonight. And hopefully, Jubril should pack up and leave and prepare to face jail time somewhere because he must go to prison. Jubril must. Eventually, when all the dust is settled, he must go to prison. And they know it. We come to the issue of Igbo people. When I used to say it before, some people who are my age mates but have chosen to serve our Safulani zoo ignore it but now it's coming from a very reputable source let us see what they make of it this is why we agitate this is why we want Biafra because Nigerians will never ever love us. It is impossible. Uncle, not daddy. Never. It's impossible. There is no way we Biafrans can solve the zoo and they will love us. It is impossible. They will never do it. I liken that to the fate of the Jews all over the world. No matter that the Jews gave the world banking system, gave them Einstein, gave them the greatest inventors in the history of humanity, gave the world diamond and jewelry and all the rest of it, they still hate the Jews till today. There is still anti-Semitism till this very moment. That was why this, the, the founding of the State of Israel became inevitable. No matter what you do in Nigeria, they will never ever love you. Use Israel and the Jews as an example. Once you're blessed by God, people will always hate you. That's how life is. Even in the Torah itself, in the scriptures, in the Bible, it is there. Why did they hate Joseph? Why did the brothers of Joseph hate Joseph? Because the father loved him. That's how it is. They will always hate you in Africa. Their friends will always be hated. Do you know why? Because God loves us. I make no apologies about it. Absolutely no. Let us look at the plight of 
Ebos, which is uh, just basically a microcosm of what is happening across the whole of Biafra land. Ejo, Ibibio, Efik, Ishekiri, Urobo, Isoko, all the rest of it. It's just an example. Igbo people, almost slaves in Nigeria by Afani Fere. They are telling our Hanez and Diyoshi. This is the consequence of betrayal. This is the consequence of acquiescence. This is the consequences of, of lapping up to whatever rubbish Fulani dishes out all the time in the name of being a minister. Let me read what the news reported. Not from me, not from IPOB. A chieftain of the Apex Yoruba Social Political Administration of Feni Feraya Debanjo has said that Igbo people have never been so marginalized and dehumanized as they are under the present administration. This is a Yoruba man, a respectable Yoruba man is telling us that we are slaves in Nigeria. He made this presentation at a two-day event that marked the Igbo Cultural Day in Owe. There was no Igbo Cultural Day because we told them they cannot gather. So they met uh, under one or two canopies somewhere in Owe and called it Igbo Day. Nobody knew about it because if we knew, we'd go there to scatter it. And they know this very well. This Yoruba man, a very fine man at that matter, said that Igbos are slaves under this administration. But there are some people in Igbo land under this administration saying that Buhari is good, that Jibril is good essentially for us. This is the same administration that IPOP is fighting, that Ohane Zendib with Igbo governors joined to bring pattern dance to our land. Now it is come from Yoruba man, maybe they will listen. Let me continue to read. The elder statesman said that Igbo people have been treated unfairly in their own country. According to him, never in the history of this country has indeed been so marginalized and denied their fundamental human rights and traumatized as they are today. In fact, never at any time has Nigeria been at crossroads as, as it is today, and the indeed are feeling the main brunt of it. Indeed, have been completely emasculated and dehumanized in their fatherland. Emasculated and dehumanized in our own land that Chukwuke Kabiyama gave us. Which or who made it possible for this dehumanization to take place? It is Ohane Zendibu and Dibu governors. And the most painful part of it is that some people are still talking about these expired evil men as if they have anything to contribute. When it is obvious that they are the cause of the problem. He said, such treatment has made the Igbo third class citizens a little short of the slave era. That was why Okezi Bazu could order the arrest of 52 Jewish adherents in my hometown of Omaha for embarking on a religious procession in Omaha that everybody else does. Okezi Bazu ordered for the arrest. Do you know the funniest thing? The governor of the state is an Igbo man. The police commissioner that ordered, their, that basically carried out the arrest ordered by Ibazu is an Igbo man. Listen carefully. The prosecutor charging them with terrorism and treasonable felony for marching on the road only. A religious procession is an Igbo man. The judge that refused to hear the case is an Igbo man. Tomorrow when we begin to get angry at these people some of you idiots listening say, oh, no, eh, eh, you don't love yourselves now nobody will want okay see Basu. no one will want uh, the exam is Ezekiel or whatever it's called the police commissioner from Anambra state in Abia doing the will of Fulani masters people on a religious procession you're charging them for terrorism on a religious procession the day we get angry and we get violent, people won't start the story from the beginning. I hope Yoruba journalists are listening. The day we start, you will not start the story from the beginning because you are evil. You work for the, for, for the devil. This is the place where OKZ Bazo thinks he can come back as the governor he is dreaming. Anywhere OKZ Bazo's campaign group is gathering, it will be scattered. 
Okay, Zibazo can never have peace in Abia State from tonight. It's a standing order to all our units everywhere in Abia State. Okay, Zibazo will not have peace. Anything he wants, we'll give it to him. He will never have peace in Abia State until he leaves that office. He will never have peace. Anywhere okay, Zibazo is gathered, anywhere his supporters are, they must be arrested by IPOB. That thing okay, Zibazo wants in Abia State, we shall oblige him and give it to him. As long as our men and our women are being detained at the prisons in Afara, in my village, anybody supporting Okezi Bazo is a traitor of the people and must be dealt with accordingly. From tonight, whatever the consequences are, we will bear it. Okezi Bazo must be taught a lesson that other governors will learn from that you don't mess with IPOB and get away with it. After Okezi Bazo, we face Obiano. Everybody responsible for the death of IPOB shall pay very dearly for it. Starting from tonight, we are beginning with Abia State. Wherever OKC Bazo's campaign group is gathered, we will destroy it. And if you're related to the commissioner in Abia State, he's an evil man. Warn him to desist from arresting IPOB Jewish worshippers. Adherents who don't worship, we are not Jewish, we worship Elohim. Because very soon we shall rebuild our temple in Arochubu. We will rebuild it to glorify the name of Elohim. We must understand this. If you're related to the Igbo Commissioner of Police in Abia, tell him to get away. We have removed many police commissioners before him and he too will be gone very soon. Abia, Omoaya is my hometown. That's where I come from. The seat of the government is on my father's property. On my father's land. IPOB will not be molested in Omoaya. The next time we march in Omoaya, I will give order for the security to confront anybody that comes to arrest our people. That thing they want to know my head, they will get it. But from tonight, OKZ Bazo's campaign will be destroyed. Every vehicle carrying the pictures of OKZ Bazo will be destroyed. Anywhere you see OKZ Bazo's poster in Abia State, you will destroy it. Until the reason people. It's a standing order from me to all our outfits. Anything they want to give them from now onwards. They are like a hammer. They are mad people. We must proceed. This is Radio Biafra. The time now is approximately 24 minutes past the hour of 9 p.m. Here in the Holy Land of Israel. We are doing what Elohim asked us to do. And okay, Zibazo, near world, all of them must face the music at the appropriate time. The police prosecutor in the case against our people must tell us who asked them.